Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So with this video, I'm going to start with a new topic that is forensic odontology. I'll be discussing what forensic odontology is. That is a small introduction will be given. Then who is the father of forensic odontology? A book and a paper written by him that has been asked in a previous year entrance exam. Then the factors for dental identification. What are the various factors that are used for dental identification? And then the role of a forensic odontologist. Also, if you want this PPT, then you can go check out my website. I have provided this PPT over there. The link for website is given in the description box. Now, let's get started. First, let's understand what forensic odontology is. So, forensic odontology is the study of dental application in legal proceedings. So, as the name is suggesting, forensic odontology. Odontology is the study of teeth, right? That is the dental study and the forensic we, we know what forensic is right forensic is the application of various sciences like chemistry physics dentistry medical science right all these sciences for legal proceeding or for providing justice right so uh, if these two words are clubbed together forensic odontology then it is basically the use of now what kind of uh, application of what kind of knowledge that is dental knowledge or dental study in order to solve forensic cases right so now in forensic odontology what we do is there's proper handling examination and evaluation of this evidence that is the dental evidence which will be presented in the interest of justice so basically the dental evidence is properly handled examined and evaluated in forensic odontology the evidence that may be derived from the teeth can tell us about the age of the person and also can help us in identification of the person to whom the teeth belong. Then the father of odontology is Dr. Oscar Amido, not A, but this is O. Dr. Oscar Amido, it's written here. And this is a picture of Dr. Oscar Amido. He is known as the father of forensic odontology. There's a famous written uh, paper written by him that is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but um, the name of the paper is the Bazaar de la Charite and it was written in the year 1898 and also there's a famous book written by him and this is also the first book that is written on forensic odontology I don't know if the pronunciation is right but Lay Art Dentaire and Medicine Legal this book was written by Dr. Oscar Amido and it was published in Paris in the year 1898 and also this is the first book on odontology I mean forensic odontology here is a picture of the book also. Now, um, forensic odontology is proved to be very much beneficial, especially in the cases of mass disasters. So, forensic odontology is of immense help in identification of disease in mass disaster situations like earthquake, tsunami, air crash, etc. And in the identification of decomposed and disfigured bodies like that of drowned person, bomb blast, fire victims and victims of motor vehicle accidents. So, um, forensic odontology. Odontology talks about what teeth, right? And teeth are the hardest portion in our body. So, they resist any kind of destruction. So, in cases of mass, mass disasters, even when the body of the person is completely destroyed, what we get to see is teeth. Teeth are still present. Teeth may be still present in intact position. So, hence, these teeth can help us even in cases of mass disasters like earthquake, tsunami, air crashes, etc. Also, they decompose at very late stages. So, even in severely decomposed bodies, teeth can help or in disfigured bodies, these teeth can help us identify the person. Now, there are various factors that can be used for dental identification. The most basic factor that we can um, use is count the number of teeth. So, the assessment of teeth in the mouth should include those that are present and those that are missing. The number of possibilities that exist for the combination of teeth missing or present may well 
be enough to obtain a positive identification including those that are present or missing so if we know how many teeth a person had before he or she died we can count the number of teeth with the disease body that we are having and we can get an idea although this method does not give us any conclusive result but yes we can use it like for example in few people um we do not get to have uh, the third molar right not everyone gets uh, the third molar right so um that can help us know if um the dead body is having a third molar whereas the dis- uh, whereas the missing person does not have so we can um ascertain that okay this is not the person that's missing or that we are looking for then um restorations a tooth is restored when there is a loss of tooth substance due to dental caries fractures or um, sub abnormal wearing of the teeth or for an aesthetic reason the type of filling material used um, so basically um people restore their teeth for various reasons like for example if there is any kind of fracture in the tooth or any kind of um, wear and tear of the tooth or even for aesthetic reason just for eye pleasing reasons so people can um go for filling materials that and there are different kinds of filling materials that can also be used like the most common one is silver amalgam then there can be precious and non precious metals can be used then crowns of gold or porcelain or porcelain fused to material can also be used temporary dressings or fillings may also be used um th- that are made up of zinc oxide eugenol so here you can see restored tooth are there like for example here it's gold here it's silver so if any person have had a restoration of the teeth then that becomes even more easy easy to identify that person then um dental processes like a full denture removable part denture bridges orthodontic appliances so dental processes or dentures like these if the person is using like in old age right people use dentures um or dental processes then that also helps very much to identify any person then the bony pattern the medullary bone of the jaws possess a characteristic trabecular pattern which can be duplicated on the post mortem radiograph tooth angulation root morphology bone loss specific change in pulp chambers pulpal outlines may also be assessed so bony patterns everyone has a characteristic bony patterns that is we can talk in terms of tooth angulation root morphology bone loss all these factors can help then the occupation the habits and the social position of the person can also help modify the teeth of a person in one way or the another for example severe generalized tooth attrition is common among workers that who are continuously exposed to atmospheric atmosphere that contains abrasive then there are certain habits that may also leave some kind of permanent vestiges that may help in develop a profile of the individual like the if someone is used to you know chronic pipe smoking or long term back pipe pain then they um, might have unilateral bimaxillary wear pattern wear and tear pattern and notching on the upper incisors so if we know the daily habits of some pers- of um, those person or the kind of environment that they are exposed to there can be attrition seen or there can be wear and tear due to you know um, continuous smoking or playing some kind of instrument like back pipe we can compare the teeth and um, then link if that's the same person or if that can be same person or not then there are various roles of forensic odontology first is the identification of unknown human remains through their dental records then providing assistance to the forensic experts and police personals in cases of mass disasters then age estimation of both living and deceased person that includes neonatal remains there are various methods for this age estimation that will be discussed in my upcoming videos then there can be analysis of bite marks found on the victims or accused in case of physical or sexual assault then identification of bite marks on substances such as wood leather food stuff etc 
then forensic odontologists can also help in the identification of weapon of offense using the same principle of bite mark analysis they can also act as an expert witness in cases involving bite or weapon mark they can also provide assistance to archaeologists in building up a dietary history of tribe or a race so all these are roles of a forensic odontologist so this was all about this video i hope you understood each and everything if you have any problem do let me know in the comment section <laughs>